Hey guys, in this video we're going to learn about adding depth, frames, layers, and animations. So go ahead and subscribe. I thought I'd try post recording for this one. So we're going to use the line tool here after we make a few layers to get things going to draw our land. Then we're going to use the bucket to fill in uh, down here below. The uh, reason why we put these dots on here is so that uh, for animation purposes, when the land moves, it can, uh, you can really see the animation. Alright, now with the legs here, uh, one thing I want to point out is we only have two dots for the legs because I want to make a really big head here. And uh, with this really big head, it's going to allow later on you can have some movement back and forth. Unfortunately, we're not going to get to that in this video because I wanted to keep it about six minutes long. Alright, so here I used another color for shading, but you can also use the dithering pin for that and uh, make it um, look nice. So I drew this whole entire thing on one frame, but then I'm going to break it up and start moving all the pieces uh, to the other frame. So this one right here is a really unique tool. It's the wand and it allows me to select the colors and the areas I want just by clicking on them. And I can just copy and paste them into the new layers where they're going to be in. Uh, so that's how this works here, and um, uh, the body disappeared, but it's because I just put on another layer. All right, now I got to rearrange my layers here so that they can be in order, and the sword and stuff like that can be in the front. Uh, once I got the sword in the front, it looks pretty nice. So, all right, let's see what's going to go next. Um, all right. Uh, I think a background here, but I don't like it. Later on, I'm going to put a um, actually make this a gradient uh, so that it looks pretty cool. It's a sunrise, not a sunset. <laughs> made a sunrise gradient for later on. So now we're going to be creating our frames uh, for our animation. We're going to have the sword, which we made longer, uh, be moving forward for an attack, and the shield to come up, but also walking. And so with each one of these steps, I decided to keep the character in place and move the ground instead uh, for the walking instead of having the character walk across the screen. Uh, this is just depending on how you want your camera view, if you want it character centered or scene centered. And so simple, just uh, having the legs go up and down. With the sword, you can't see uh, the legs going up and down as he's walking, but you can see, you can see him disappearing uh, behind it as the scene changes. All right, so the next part I have is the sword going forward. Um, we're about to get to that. And one of the problems we had here um, was, do we extend the arm and draw another dot for the arm, or do we not? As you'll see on the shield, I'll extend it and make the arm longer, add an extra dot for it. But on the sword, I don't, uh, because it just looks nice the way it is. It didn't need anything added to it. So I wasn't going to make it more complicated than what it needed to be. So, all right, here, we're almost done with all the dots of the moving. It takes a little bit of effort, a little bit of time, but there we go, it looks pretty nice. All right, now let's get going on the attack motion here. All right, so we just use our move tool. That's all we did. I'm gonna have to move our layers back because the shield's in front of the sword, um, but we just use that move tool and uh, as you can see here, the sword moves in front. I'm going to move it a little bit farther. And you're going to see what I'm talking about. Um, do I extend his arm or does it look fine like that? And I just felt that it looked fine. I didn't need an extra dot for the arm. Sometimes we overcomplicate things, um, but we just need to make it simple. So there you go. Now we're having the sh uh, shield go up to be blocking, and um, this way I, I had to add that extra arm, extra dot for the arm. Um, this is the arm that's actually in the background, um, and it's not in the forefront arm. Uh, if from the view you're looking at, the sword is actually the, the one that's in the forefront. So as you see here, this ice bolt coming in, um, I use the dithering tool here, to start changing the colors as it's splashing away to give it a nice look as it's dissipating. And I love the dithering tool for this because I can just, you know, make a lot of easy changes really quick with different colorant, uh, color sch schemes uh, going down from that blue 15% uh, 
I use this tool way too much. Um, I'm trying to cut back on how often I use it because I've been relying on it like crazy. So, all right, guys, uh, we're almost done here. I hope you like this. Let, leave in the comments if you like the post commentary more, or do you like me walking through it as we uh, go and make it? Uh, all right, there we go. We got our little guy going, attacking, blocking some ice. I hope you enjoyed. And I actually uh, sped through this once I got the gradient set here uh, because I realized I'm going to have to edit each layer by layer or do gradient. And so I just copied and pasted it. And so it's going to speed through here real fast to make that change. But that's it, guys. Post in the comments what you like, what you don't like, what you would love to see me make next. And hey, you guys have a blessed day.